Welcome back, America. We have the great Peter Schweitzer with us. He is the founder and president of the Government Accountability Institute. And I say great because, Peter, you were really the first to begin exposing not just the Biden crime family, but all these long-serving politicians in Washington, D.C., the bigger the government gets, the more centralized the government gets, the more crooks we have in these high-level positions. And they try and play the system, um, and it's really quite incredible. And it's also incredible who's investigated and who isn't. I want to read you a short list I just wrote down during the break of some of the things we know about Joe Biden and his family. And then I want you to comment on it, and then I want to comment further on it. We know most recently a $250,000 wire from Beijing to Wilmington, which has the beneficiary's address as the address of the home of Joe and Jill Biden. We have the Biden Penn Center, which was heavily subsidized by the Communist Chinese. So after Vice President Biden takes a respite from his endless government career, uh, he's paid almost a million dollars a year. And this Chinese communist regime is placing an enormous amount of money into this so-called institute. He does almost nothing. He's a no-show employee, gives a few speeches. You look at emails and texts Two witnesses related to the, the Hunter Biden laptop. It is loaded with evidence, loaded with tech, with emails, loaded with potential witnesses. Tony Bobolinsky's come forward. He's given testimony to the FBI, which they basically have ignored. Devin Archer's now come forward, talks about at least 20 phone calls Joe Biden was involved in. And apparently he didn't know why he was on the phone or the speaker phone or why he was in meetings. And according to Democrat, there's no evidence he knew anything, let alone took a dollar. We know that Hunter Biden's partners and staff at his businesses were in constant contact with the vice president's staff. We know that Hunter Biden took multiple trips to countries that he was doing business with or countries he wanted to do business with on Air Force Two with the vice president. We know they set up at least 20 shell corporations to receive millions and millions of dollars from foreign entities, particularly the communist regime in China. Of course, we're told Joe doesn't know anything about that. And of course, Joe is the central figure in all this because nobody would give a damn about Hunter Biden and his pornography and his drugs and all the rest of it unless he was the guy through which they could get influence with Papa Bear. The IRS comes forward and they've said through whistleblowers, we were obstructed. We were told not to use this GPS system to track down the meeting that, that the Bidens had with this foreign potentate or oligarch. Uh, we were told not to pursue certain issues and so forth. We were told by an assistant United States attorney, no, we're not going to get a search warrant for some documents that might be in some closet or something. And then Hunter Biden's lawyers are tipped off about it. We have an FBI whistleblower that comes forward and confirms what the IRS whistleblowers have said. We have a special counsel that's been appointed who's done everything humanly possible to be the mob lawyer for the Biden family, just like his boss, the Attorney General of the United States. We have Burisma, which is obvious, a corrupt company paying millions of dollars to Hunter Biden to be on its board, and an obvious act of obstruction by Joe Biden getting the prosecutor fired. And so I just did this during the break, wrote this down, and I thought to myself, we don't even have an investigation a criminal investigation of Joe Biden taking place on any of these issues. There's been no subpoenas. There's been no search warrants. Not only is not a special counsel, there's no assistant U.S. attorney. There's no public integrity section looking into this. And then conversely, every time, every time Donald Trump sneezes, there's a grand jury. Oh, there's a grand jury for documents. Oh, there's a grand jury for January 6th, even though... He didn't commit acts of insurrection or, or, uh, or, or s sabotage and sedition, but we got this Klan Act, so we can use that. Then we go to Georgia. Oh, we have a whole RICO thing going on in the state with a hack left-wing Democrat DA. And that hack left-wing Democrat DA, of course, is uh, violating federal jurisdiction. She's indicting federal officials for what they did at a federal level, and that's just part. And then, of course, in New York... We have a hack, radical, left-wing attorney general who's trying to destroy Trump's businesses. 
with a hack Democrat elected judge. And then, of course, we have another hack Democrat elected DA in the Manhattan case. I'll get to the question, I promise, going on here. So here's my question to you. Why are there no efforts that I hear about in the United States Senate to encourage the impeachment or even an impeachment inquiry by the Republicans, the vast majority of Republicans of the Senate, including the leadership in the Senate? Why are they so silent? Uh, yeah, Mark, it's, it's really a natural disgrace. Uh, I mean, there's so much evidence for what the Bidens have done, uh, how they set up this influence scheme operation. This is essentially what the impeachment articles were set up for, the notion that foreign powers are somehow steering or manipulating or controlling or influencing our president is precisely why you have an impeachment inquiry. Uh, and yet the U.S. Senate has been silent. Um, and you have to look at Mitch McConnell, who's the leader of the Republicans in the Senate. He's been there for a long time. Uh, and one of the reasons that they do not want to have a conversation about China, Chinese influence in the United States, China buying off American politicians, currying favor with them, is because Mitch McConnell, in my mind, is, is number two on the list of American politicians who are compromised by China. Joe Biden's first, Mitch McConnell is a close second. Uh, and you and I have talked about this before, but essentially the Chinese government set up Mitch McConnell's family uh, to reap a huge amounts of money in the global shipping business. Um, the Chinese government finances the construction of their shipping vessels. They build them. They provide crews. They provide contracts. Mitch McConnell knows that if he were to step on the feet of Beijing in any way, anger them, they could destroy, meaning the Chinese communist government could destroy the family business overnight. So Mitch McConnell, out of self-preservation, not out of the interests of the country, wants this issue to go away. Uh, and there are other people in the Senate as well. And this is the problem we have to face as a country. You know, what are the options that we have? The founders created opportunities for us to check those in powers. But what opportunities do we have if the machinery of government has broken down, if DOJ, if the whistleblower statutes are now being called into question, what other options do we have when our political leadership faces some of these same compromised situations? So it's a very perilous situation we're in right now. When we come back, what you say about Mitch McConnell, the question I have is, so why do a majority of Republicans keep electing him to be their leader? Leader of what to what for what? I mean, these checks and balances you're talking about, of course, it takes the House to impeach, but it takes the Senate to hold a trial. And what I've been hearing out of the Senate is this is supposed to be rare. We're not supposed to use this that often. You know, we're supposed to save this for Donald Trump. We tried it once. We'll hit him twice, even when he's out of office. But for Biden, it's supposed to be rare. I want to pursue that with you. We'll be right back. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.